Hello and welcome back to the win- no, the Tug of War <laughs> Radiant. We play the event best of seven between Empire and NIP. My name is Noah and I am joined by Tsunami as we're making it through this marathon series which is currently tied at a 1-1 one -one situation. Thrilling. <laughs> Thrilling. Thrilling in indeed is the word to be used. I mean, it was a pretty good game last game, and uh, I've, I've 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 sent you a uh, second uh, image because obviously you know we need to oh, archive yes. these games. We need a way to keep track of what's been going on. So we've agreed to uh, that I'll be drawing a comic in between each game to uh, to to keep us make sure that you guys as well remember what happened in the previous game, and then we'll have them all. We'll have a nice comic book of the whole best of seven series by the end of the day. And uh, this is for the last game. So tsunami, can you can you take us through this one, please? Okay, it doesn't look like there's like a like a connection between the panels. I think they're just three independent scenes. So uh, either mm -hmm. this Chen Centaur is enjoying a nice campfire, or he's <laughs> getting Infinity Ward. I don't feel so good, Mister Doom Midas. I think that's a Midas. It could be a campfire. Uh, yeah, it's it's not a centaur though. Oh, it's not a centaur. Uh. Oh, it's an OD. There we oh, go. Oh, it's an OD there with a minus. Yeah, oh, okay, 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 okay. That game, right? That was one I of the see, major I points see. I felt. All right, great job, great job. Yeah. Then this one is clearly. Well, I mean, this is wrong because it's a ninja in pajama dreaming of a BKB, right? Because no, he's got the hat right? on this time. He's got the hat on. So oh, he's got clearly, a hat it's a on shaman. This time. Wait, what? Shaman? Shaman doesn't have a hat. Yeah, he does. No, he doesn't. Oh, he did in the. That guy has cos cosmetic had a hat. Oh. I looked at it in the end game screen. Okay, fine. All right, fun. So it's a shaman dreaming of a BKB, but then there's a, a an ancient apparition who looks like a, a cartoon villain. <laughs> now you're just being facetious. From uh, what was that one series? I think it was Doug, the guy Skeeter. Except yeah, this looks like Skeeter from Doug, except blue. <laughs> right. Okay. And he gets a rampage, or it's Fada Razor. Or it there could we be go. Fada Razor. There we go. We got there in the end, but you did take the roundabout way. Okay, any improvement from the last comic, would you say? This is substantially improved, but you okay. got to spend more time, and you, you took advantage of the time. I, I, I'm... I think you've, uh, you've definitely stepped up your artistic right. capabilities. I'm on the number scale yet. Yeah, I'll give this one a, this is a solid, solid 6 out of 10. Six out of ten. Wow, that, that high praise indeed. High praise indeed. All right, I'm aiming for a ten by the end a of the day. A solid failing score. <laughs> it's it's not failing. I'm over. The, I'm over the average. That's uh, I consider that I good. Suppose. Alrighty then, game number three, and we are well into this draft. It's Grimstroke, Viper, and Sven picked up by Empire. Meanwhile, NIP have gone for the Pangolier, the Lycan, and the Rubik. Uh, this Lycan pick seems a little bit interesting to me, but definitely showing that NIP are saying, right, okay, aggression, it worked out for us. We're going to aggressive once again. Dude, I'm just high. This, uh, wait, is this game indicator right? Because it's, I thought it's first of four. Yeah, right. Yeah, but there are only three little slots above each team. Oh, yeah. Yeah, above Empire and above NIP, they're just uh, three little. Are you watching the draft on the str on the stream? Yeah, on the Russian stream. Yeah, oh, yeah. okay, okay, never mind. Anyway, Empire going back for their tiny. Ah, oh, yes. This is, oh God, this is good. Sven. This is good. That's what we want from them. I really don't like Sven. I, mean, I guess it can be kind of justified against a Lycan. He's got a lot of little units poking away at you. But I'm still not a fan. At I mean, minimum, I like Sven because he's easy yeah. to draw, so... <laughs> So, win or lose, he's going to be in the drawing. <laughs> yeah. Even if he's completely irrelevant, he's going to be in the drawing. He doesn't do a single thing, he's, gonna, he's just going to be there. Uh, throwing a stun, I don't know. He'll, 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 he'll be up there. Nice All right, uh, fun. Yeah, suits my, my creativity very well. So, they go back for the 33 Pango as well. Uh, it brought them a fair amount of success in game one. Um, didn't necessarily do anything special in the laning phase, but it definitely kept Grimstroke focused on him. And they are going for it yet again. I mean, they pick it, they don't ban the Grimstroke. Empire immediately pick the Grimstroke. And as a result, we're going to see that Soulbind leash interaction against the Rolling Thunder almost certainly. But at least this time, NIP have 
somewhat of a response to it as they do pick up a Rubik. And Rubik is a hero who's not only good against Grimstroke, but also amazing against Viper as well. Oh, why is that? Uh, you can steal his Nether Toxin, and as a result, you can break Viper. And so he won't have access to his uh, Corrosive Skin, which gives him more magic resistance. So you break that, and then Rubik in general with his Arcane Supremacy just makes Viper all that more squishy. So it's pretty much a guaranteed steal every single time. And if you don't get it, you get Viper Strike, which, oh no, god forbid, I got an ultimate. So Rubik overall is a great response pick. It could even be mid, but now that we see... Uh, I, wait, actually, never mind. Well, sorry, I was watching Spoilers. again. Spoilers. You know what would be sweet is if they pick Razor Fada again. That would be so good. Oh, they're not going to do the that. There pick. is no way they could. You don't could. think so? Oh, I'm golly. I'm all my money on it. Golly, a Razor. I'm rich. All right. All right. Well, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so if it's, a, if it's a Razor, they're not going to send the Rubik mid, but Rubik in general is just a great response to Viper. We know I've done here, Tsunami, is you've, you've boy who called wolfed yourself, because any prediction you do actually make now, uh, <laughs> we're, we're just going to, we're, we're not believing you. You know what would be a great ban? And... <laughs> Stop. <laughs> uh, but Empire do have the ace card this time, and they've got the Viper, who has been banned out every single time so far in NIP, go, well, you know, maybe this they hero isn't that bad. They have the ace player, though. They do have the ace player. And they've got uh, Lycan and Rubik, two heroes very good versus Viper. As I now know. Yeah, well, I mean, Rubik specifically, but Lycan also as well. Uh, a hero who does not really get kited heavily by Viper Strike, and the Viper Strike being cast on Lycan is not that big of a penalty because he has a bunch of other units laying in damage. So even though your primary hero's attack speed is slowed, you'll have Wolves, you'll have Necro Creeps, you may even get a Dominator, even though that build I don't think is as popular as it used to be. But overall, I think Lycan is a, a hero that we don't see all too frequently. I think it's usually a very situational pick. Um, I think NIP are more, they favor the hero more than other teams do. Yeah. And I think that this is a, there's, there's no exception here. I don't think Sven is a good enough mitigation tool, but maybe I'm just underrating Sven because I don't like him. <laughs> you do, you do, you know, bones pick with us, dude, don't you? I, I've had a bone to pick with him ever since the cosmetics first came out because it was pretty much Sven and Axe were the only heroes who had cosmetics and Nature's Prophet. And I have like 10 different Sven swords in my inventory. And so all my other heroes, like they look good, but I hate Sven so much that I made him intentionally the ugliest. I went for the ugliest Sven possible. Not so hard. he has like these weird like circus pants on. Sorry, do you have He's the ring all... blade? Uh, I do have the ring blade, but there's an uglier looking sword, so I have an uglier sword. And then I have his ugliest hat, which is, it like, it curves his two little horns, like, upwards. It, like, makes them erect. I don't know what the purpose <laughs> of it is, but, yeah, he's he's my ugliest hero, and he's also the ugliest hero in competitive. Like, some, some serious hate here, so, uh... Well, you know, no, Clarissa and I are clearly not uh, thinking too much off this Sven pick, but now a Phoenix picked up by the ninjas in pajamas, and uh, quite a good pick here as well, because Empire currently have nothing which can take their egg at any kind of speed. Um, so what will be the final pick for Team Empire here? I am predicting they're going to want to grab a mid laner here. <laughs> oh. No, I, no, I didn't I jump across so to... Okay, the, okay, no, okay, I'm, okay, I'm not okay, a dirty okay. cheat like you, but if I did have to guess... They have not picked anything, yes. Um, uh, no, I, I think they'd be willing to send the, the Viper mid, but I mean, they could pick some something else. Viper mid versus Raid. I, I, yeah, I guess it's a, it's a kind of neutral lane matchup, so might as well. Yeah, because I mean, Viper Marana. has some yeah, okay. magic resistance, so okay, yeah, they go for a Marana instead. Kodos is going to be playing it, and Maiden's going to be on the Viper. And oh, okay, so it's a it's a carry Sven. It is indeed a carry Sven. Well, I'm marginally more okay with that. Yeah, I think I think in this situation it's not bad. It's good against Lycan as well. He tries to put up all these units, but you can just cleave straight through them. A nice AOE stun as well. Uh, I do like the Sven versus Lycan matchup, but yeah, could have some trouble with a Razor. Doesn't really have a huge amount of mobility, even with Warcry to uh, get away from a Razor. And uh, that's you know, for sure. I think Fat is kind of good on this hero. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. He, he tends to get rampages. I hope he gets another rampage so I can just copy and paste the final frame from the last. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, too, I'm focused too much on the drawing now. I need to get back in the game. I wonder whether they go for a Marana. There isn't that much setup. Like, I feel like these days you almost need the Bane to justify a Marana pick. 
Mm, I and mean, she's not really going to be able to arrow like a lichen because there's so many units surrounding her. I mean, him. Yeah, they've got the Avatos, but yeah, as you say, and it, it, it seems like a very all in pick just for the leap with that attack speed. Um, right. All right, then. So, judging upon these drafts, where is your money, Tsunami? They get Fodder Razor again, and you went for it last game, so I get to go for it this game. <laughs> all right, I'll, you, you can take the Razor. Um, I will be going with uh, Team Empire. Just because I got Viper. I mean, Fata Razor is good, but anybody Viper is better. It's a three position Viper, though. Any Viper? Any Viper? Any Viper, dude. dude. Any Viper, okay. Any Viper. Fair Me, enough. Nomad Viper could beat Nomad Razor. Viper. No, I'm not going to say that. I'm not gonna... <laughs> that's, a, that's a silly thing to say. Alrighty then, let's get into it. Game number three between these two teams in this best of seven series. It's We already know it's going to be going along for at least three more games, so a long, long series still ahead. But we definitely have a taste of how this things might be going up as we now have a second game with Fata on that Razor. And uh, yeah, you know, a lot a lot online here. And of course, uh, if you do want to place down any bets on this game, then head over to 1xBet, who are the official betting partner of WePlay. Uh, you can get yourself an extra 130 euro bonus on your first deposit if you bet on these matches. And of course, uh, this best of finals, best of seven finals, is a last match on the tug of war radiance. So uh, not long to be able to go and do that now. Uh, details in the stream, below the stream, in the chat, and over on the social networks, of course. So easy enough to find us. We do have a smoked up Grimstroke, which we are creepily following. And uh, the wolves going to come in. See Sayu. Says, hey, what's up? Can uh, maybe eat this guy if he levels up Avalanche, but no. Would you have done it? Would you would you have leveled Avalanche to kill the wolf? Are you kidding me? You know how much mana that costs. <laughs> For a treant, though, I would do that in a heartbeat. <laughs> yeah, true. The, tree, the, the treant is the, something else. Screw those guys. What's the lowest bounty summon? I wonder. Spiderling or Spiderite? Spiderite, yeah, probably. I think it's Spiderite. Yeah, I'd do it for a spider right? <laughs> I'd do it for a Klondike bar. Just to make it feel special. Nobody ever uses spells on them. That's not true, actually. They're, <laughs> they're, they're very commonly nuked down with spells. But anyway. Actually, um, I'm not even sure if Avalanche would have killed it, because uh, the wolves have so much magic resistance. I guess it was like one hit away. But... Yeah, I don't know. It would have, would have at least closed the gap anyway. So I will get this Sail. rune, but what's it going to cost him? Man, he does not have a salve either. Oh no! PPD wants to chase Saxa coming around the side as well. PPD not missing with these fire spirits for Sayu, also taking no damage from them seemingly. So, will be able to get himself out okay. He's got the TP aware though. Saxa will cancel it if he finds him. So, needs to TP out in the correct place. Yeah, Saxa won't see him. Nope. Yeah. So he um, goes back to base. Only costs him a 10 going to TP. And lane's starting to settle out. It's going to be Maiden bot with Black Archangel laning up against 33 mid lane. It's going to be the Lycan up against the Sven, which actually is not what I was expecting. Not in the slightest, but now Fada rotates in, and I'm sure Dream will probably rotate away from this. Be very surprised to see the Sven stay here. Yep. In yeah. Uh, Marana. She's TPing in. This is exactly and what Sven they want as well. Yeah, it's a really good matchup for the Murana with the leap to get away from the static link and everything. Uh, we've talked about it plenty of times with uh, a lot of different heroes, and Murana is definitely a good hero against Razor, so... Yeah, so I guess it's more than just the attack speed against the Supernova, and I, like I said, they don't have very much setup, but if it's a core Murana with these many utility options against the NIP heroes, then I guess you're not really concerned so much about the arrow, but it's more about the leap. Yeah. And of course, uh, NIP did TP their heroes around, which means that Empire still gets to keep the lane matchups they want. And uh, this means it's going to be Sven versus Lycan, which does feel pretty good. And um, Maiden here hanging out on this uh, safe lane. And uh, no surprises here going for that Nether Toxin build. Um, yeah. Well, all things considered, though, Phoenix is like a relatively good support in this situation. Uh, the Fire Spirit attack speed slow, fairly useful against both a Tiny and a Sven who, even though they'll be able to get great initiation with a Stormhammer into an Avalanche Toss, they will probably still need to pepper in one or two right clicks to finish off a target, and so if their attack speed is super slow, they may not be able to pull it off. And uh, Kodos picks up a double damage rune, and it immediately proceeds top with it. Yeah, he's looking to do some damage up here. Um, 
guess it's kind I, of I guess because what Lycan TP'd oh, back Lycan uh, TP'd mid, so... Yeah, yeah. That's why. That's why. Yeah, I didn't see the old switcheroo happening. Once again, a bit of musical lanes happening here in uh, in game number three, but yeah, no blood being spilled just yet, actually. First blood still very much in the body of whoever it may be. Uh, meanwhile, Statling comes out onto the Sven and uh, just have to jog himself away here, but Fada has TP back in, so guess what? They're going to TP back again! <laughs> Woo! Say you oh. and PPD are happy, they're getting experience while their carries are having to shuffle around. Yeah, they're the two captains as well, so I bet you they're just like, yeah, dude, dude, you gotta swap lanes. You gotta I'm swap not lanes. going, yeah. you go. And this is, I mean, it's such a nice matchup for the Sven, though, versus the Lycan, because as you talked about, you know, these wolves, they don't have a ton of armor, but they've got a lot of magic resistance, and of course, Sven, just with that cleave, you know, already one point now, I'm probably sure pretty sure he's going to go for another one. And meanwhile, they toss back the Phoenix here, PPD, with the Inkswell, but he does level up that uh, swoop, and swoops himself to safety. Icarus dive. So now it's Trilane v Trilane, Viper versus Pango in the bot lane, and Viper is handily winning that, unsurprisingly, 16-5 and five to a 7-1, and one, as Saxa does get tossed back, but he's going to be fun. Yeah, he's uh, going live to uh, live to Rubik. A little bit more in this lane. Yeah, I feel like this is actually a much better try lane for Empire to be honest. They toss back Saxo once again. Avalanche to follow up as well with the Inks. Well, that's an easy kill, and that's going to be first blood onto Saxo. Well, didn't live for that much longer. I wonder if he'll go bot now, because Pango is like farming in between tier 2 and tier 3. Yeah, that, and he can't get anywhere near Viper. But, you know, Rubik goes back into the meat grinder, so I guess they're content letting Viper freeform, because, I, I, I don't know, like, even though Lycan is okay against Viper, I don't think Razor is okay versus Viper, because your unstable current will get broken by Nether Toxin, and you need to keep up with targets, and if you're Viper striked, you're gonna get kited too much. As it is, Leap is a big enough concern, so are all the stuns between Stormhammer and the Avalanche, but they're not really contesting the Viper. Granted, I don't think a Rubik can do very much with or without yeah, a Pangolier. Yeah, I was going to say, it, it does, I don't yeah. think it makes a huge amount of difference as uh, Dream. Pulling the creep wave across and trying to take both of these camps at once at uh, NIP. Might have something to say about that as they uh, jump in and start trying to mess with Dream here. Meanwhile, Akhax Angel being chased back really far by Saxa here as uh, he just runs him down on the Rubik. Rune's about to spawn, but I think NIP have a good enough position that Empire is not going to challenge it. In fact, NIP is looking like they want to challenge Black Archangel. Preemptively, does an ink swell in case PPD was going to do a cheeky aggressive dive, but yep. he holds back. And uh, 33 grabs himself a bounty rune as well. Uh, two bounty runes, in fact. So yeah, Viper kind of lapsing a little bit there on the concentration, just letting five minute bounties go st both to uh, uh, both to the Pangolier. Will help out a little bit with this game. But, yeah, still looking pretty good for Empire, I'd say, in this laning phase. The the lane up at mid is, is kind of interesting as well, because whilst the Marana's not doing quite as well just yet, I kind of feel like you want to be dominating your lane as a Razor, and that's not really happening so far. Right. And then again, Razor's has that kind of changed with the to... passive building now? I don't know. Yeah, and, I mean, Fada prove that he doesn't really need the lane dominance like a, like we saw he only had three of his skill points skilled i wonder if he's actually doing the same thing this game uh no he's actually skilling up everything actually he's putting points in plasma field like so Angel a good way about makes it out. a good way to respond to having to deal with leap is actually just putting more points in his nuke Avalanche toss back as well. Rubik thrown out of position here. Lifts up Dream and throws him back. Uh, Sayo's still on top of him here, but doesn't have any more spells, so we'll just be punching him with that big rocky arm of his. The one on the middle lane, Koda, still just taking a fair amount of harass from uh, from Fada here, but yeah, as we talked about, it's uh, well, actually okay. Yeah, no, no, like kind of kill attempts here. Just um, hitting down Kodos every single time he's got the op opportunity to, which uh, makes the Marana feel kind of. A lot under pressure this lane as well, you know, open for a gank and uh, has to keep on faring in that regen. Yeah, but better she get ganked than the Viper. The Viper is right now, I think, the biggest trophy if Empire want to make a move. He's actually going for the Rod, which is a little bit disappointing. I thought with such a freeform situation, you could go like Radiance. Fada or something being run bigger, down in the middle the lane, they jump on top of him, and with the Star Storm, they will finish him off. So uh, Empire making the rotations and getting a kill on the mid lane, which is uh, kind of unexpected, but very, very good for Kodos here. And they will go and shrine up together as well. 
Sorry, what were you saying about Viper not going right to Atos? What kind of dreamland are you living in? <laughs> I mean, we saw Ace go for the Radiance on his life stealer when it was a completely free from situation. At the minimum, I thought it would have been worthwhile for Maiden to go for a Midas on the Viper. But he's just rushing the rod, and I guess it's uh, going to be him starting to take over the game and get, letting Marana get more farm. I, I think that's the only justification for not going a greedier build on this Viper. Yep, uh, now they have the toss back as well. Saxa in trouble, but the race is rotated in. Sightling does get broken, but they're trying to bring down Saxa. Lifts up Black Arch Angel. Black Arch Angel is actually the one in trouble as PPD swings in and burns him to death. The Grimstroke has gone and Empire forced to back away empty handed from this engagement. Fata with a nice rotations up to the top lane, and uh, um, maybe he's going to be staying here. I don't know. Going to be interesting to see where the Lycan goes, or maybe the Lycan is just going to settle in the jungle for a while. No lane is safe. He wants to bottles up an arcane room. That's going to be fairly nice, you know. Likes his cooldowns, this tiny. This tiny fella. Yeah, I guess he's uh, going to give up the safe lane to Razor, and well, Phoenix is going to soak up lanes mid. I, I do think Supernova is very, very valuable this game, and PBD is not even level 5 yet, so I think that's a fairly good investment. It's just that I don't know where Lycan is going to really feel confident in... Like, like I don't know what his game plan is in this game. He did go for the Dominator, so I, I guess that is still the popular build. So, is he going to be pushing with it? Is he going to be fighting with it? Looks like right now, right now he may do be, be doing a bit of both as he's smoked up with Rubik. Yeah, 33 trying to find man in the trees here. We'll use the Rolling Thunder and finally scouts him out and does get that bash off. And now Ace on top of him as well. Saxa joining in the party as the Viper held still lifted up, thrown down, beaten down. Does get the Viper Strike out onto Saxa, but I don't think... He's going to get that kill. The poison will not be enough to tick away Saxa here, so wastes the ultimate and dies alone in the bottom lane, cold, hungry, and scared. The other reason I would have liked the Radiance, Radiance is it provides a lot of mischance for the multiple units that Lycan is sure to build. So he's already got the Dominator, he's already got the Alpha Wolf Dominated. Almost certainly going to be going for uh, a Necro Book. Well, maybe not almost certainly. He could go for like a BKB or other builds as well, but in general, I think the mischance could go a long way against him and Well, Black Ox Angel just TP'd into this one, and he's immediately going to be blo broken down as well, so... Hmm. Questionable <laughs> rotations from Empire. Yeah, and Shapeshift hasn't even had to be spent, so Ace is being able to hold on to that cooldown. 10 minute room spawn, and IP are going to get three of them. And now PPD is getting closer and closer to level 6 as he's just sitting mid. On Inkswell, going to tick him down. It doesn't matter. They still get the kill. Oh, it's actually a soul that stole Inkswell, so yeah. That's where the problem comes in. Now Madden's actually under tower. They do pop the shape shift on Ace. He's kind of like, oh, do I want it? No, I don't. Yeah, I do. No, I want Now he just runs away. So uh, Madden's kind of sitting here like, well, that was interesting. Thank God I've got Marana on my team. The TP was cancelled though. Uh, everyone's still invis from the Moonlight Shadow, but I think once, yeah, okay, so Marana shows up back on the map and Lycan feels confident farming the lane again. Yeah, and Rubik has Nether Toxin stolen, like so the they could go on. Yeah, they can absolutely go on him with Nether Toxin stolen. Yeah, cancelling out this corrosive uh, skin as well, really, really nice. As they do get on top of it, so much poison down, but Saxa is just annihilated on the backlines here. 33 trying to run away from Sayu here as he's uh, looking for another target here as the vibe strike comes out. Toss as well. 33 dealt with, and Empire find themselves two kills in the bottom lane. NIP took a bit too long about killing that Viper, and they do pay a heavy price. They have the tower in return, but yeah, they stuck around a little bit too long. Sayu gets a nice rotation. Radiant structures are fortified. Oh, Fata doing his best to uh, put some pressure here on the top lane with this catapult Radiant wave as well. Always looking to uh, get some damage off and get those values out of those sieging catapults. And uh, he's actually going to tank up pretty much the entire tower from it as well. Because he's got the salve to pop, so no issues here. And they're probably going to get this tower. There doesn't seem to be any response from the Sven, who's just kind of jungling next to them. Being like, yep, yep, these creeps are good. Yeah, he knows that Phoenix is level 7. Although PB does not have the mana for Supernova, he still, in theory, has it available. One of the things that I like so much about Razors in general, but specifically Fados Razor, is he's very flexible with his item builds. He doesn't have like one specific build that he always goes for. Last game he went for the Yules and the Sanjin Yasha. This game he's going for the Drum into the BKB. And so yeah. one, even even beyond Razor being such a flexible hero in general, he also has so many different item builds that you can situate yourself depending on what you're up against and how the game is going. And so 
I think this game, uh, it's it's going to be more early action than the previous game where Fado was kind of sitting back a little bit more until he had that Yules and SNY completed and the BKB. So, but this time, if you're going to have to deal with a Viper who got a rod at like freaking 10 minutes, you're going to have to join in fights much earlier. So he goes for the drum and he's going to be building a BKB shortly after. Angel being run down once again. The Inks were going to buy him a little bit of time, but not quite enough. He does die to Black Ox Angel. Now the rolling coming in and the ultimate use from the Phoenix as well. Man just being burnt up by all of these units, by all of this burn, and he does actually just die here in the bottom lane. Main's going to fall and someone else actually, okay. The turnaround kill comes in for Empires. They blow up Saxon. The arrow connects onto PPD, so they get another one as well. Ace runs in, finds a courier, fighting up with Dream, and now comes in the static link. Fata has joined the fight. A Dream stands no chance. He is blown up by Ace and Fata. Now they're looking towards Kodos as well. Lincoln and Blim leaping around, TPing out of this one. They don't have an interrupt, so Kodos can just TP himself away. Nice read in the situation there from him as I'll shrine up and get to work on these creeps. Uh, Sai jumped in. Please, Anna Fabisa. <laughs> Black Arcs Angel has died so many times. Oh, I think he did get that last hit. Good for him. And Empire are actually going to challenge this. Uh, Shapeshift is in spent, and Ace is still kind of hanging around or toss. Oh, but the Ink Sword just detonates too early. Or, yeah, or rather, I don't no, think he got Ace enough ticks. Ace getting run down. Ace tosses out. And there comes another Toxic. Ace Radiant's is dead. Is under oh, dear. Radiant structures are All right. Well, that's the so... first time the early Ace toss has actually pa uh, paid off. It wasn't a shapeshifted Lycan, but Lycan in general. Both these carries are going to struggle against getting kited. We saw Sven just now struggle, and he's going to struggle a lot until his BKB comes out. And even once BKB comes out, he's going to have a lot to be worried about because, you know, if the Link comes out first, or if he gets Fire Spirited, just something very, very minimal from NIP can straight up force a BKB from Sven. I'm not sure PPD there to uh, dive away before the, uh, the Phantom was able to connect with him, so... Yeah, just a little bit of time there to be able to react, and uh, PPD doing it well. Net worth very even, by the way. 6,000, 5,900, 5,900, 5,700, 5,700, and then poor old 33 saying down at 4,800. So. Yeah, did have a bit of a rough lane there. Poor 33, too. look at Black Arx Angel, man. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, that, that guy is poor. That guy's giving a new <laughs> meaning to the word poor. But. Are scanning. Yeah, no Midas's on either side, so both teams just going to be farming up the old-fashioned way. Oh, Midas free game. Oh. Saxa caught out, Atos, Arrow, Nether Toxin, he's a goner, and they will get the room for this as well. But Ace is coming in, and PPD's hanging around on the sidelines also. He's dusted up Kodos, Kodos, no mana left, and also being burnt away. They're just going to pop the shapeshift here and try and chase down Kodos here, and Kodos is just not able to do anything. The dust finally runs dust off, time's out. but Marana... The ultimate's about to end from him, and Ace just There's using... No, no he gets out, gets out. Uh, meanwhile, on the top lane, 33 takes a fall as Sayu catches him out. Uh, it looks like it was a gang from the Viper once again, so it's moving around the map and finding so many kills on this Viper. So uh, Ato's really going to work this game. Yeah. Him building it and then him moving around this much has paid off. I think it kind of worked out that his lane died and so his tier one tower went down fairly early on and as a result no one's really obligated to take that lane over and so maiden feels confident just moving around the map using his rod offensively rather than feeling like ah, i mean there's a free lane here i should farm it but he's moving around as much as he needs to yep and this is going to be the replay of the kill we missed uh from sayu here and yeah, it's just an Atos, it's a Nether Toxin, it's an Avatos, no trouble at all for Empire to take that kill. Meanwhile, back to the live game, 33's in trouble once again, running to the trees here, but with the rotations coming in uh, from the Rubik, it's going to force back Empire. Meanwhile, under the tier 1 in the mid lane, they're uh, going to make a play onto Kodos, perhaps, a swoop in from PPD. Uh, a toss back. <laughs> throwing a creep at them, not sure that was intentional. But Ace coming in as well, this tower is very much gone, and uh, yeah, NIP taking all the tower in the middle lanes. They've managed to take all of the tier 1 towers right now. Meanwhile, Empire have absolutely none. Very similar to the previous game. <laughs> Although, yeah. the previous game, NIP had a Chen, so it was kind of justified. I guess this time with a Lycan, it's also justified. Yeah, they've got, they've got the push covered. Um, Empire... 
finding a couple more kills, and by literally two more kills, um, nine and seven right now. I feel like they should be looking for a bit more with this Viper, to be honest. I think this Viper, if you, if you rush the Atos, you just got to go. Try and make space right. for your Sven, who's currently sitting with the Mask of Madness and the uh, Sanjin Yasha coming out to him as well. So, you know, big boy, biggest boy on the map. Gets the uh, big boy medal as uh, I toss on some creeps in. Farming up in this mid lane, just bursting the creep wave down and uh, stopping it, pressure coming in. Yeah, but much like the Phantom Assassin in game one, Sven is not going to do anything until his BKB comes out. He's just going to stay as far away from NIP as possible. Even then, I feel like Actually, he needs he goes a blink for the or Yasha first. Yeah, yeah. So, go, I mean, I, I appreciate that. Mask of Mandus and Sanjin Yasha gives you so much speed. It means you actually stand a chance of getting away from this Razor and breaking that static link, which is what this game is pretty much all about, because Sven can't have his damage drained in this game. He has their only physical damage, pretty much. I mean, Mirana can do a bit, but... Yeah, but I, I would think in theory, like, if you get an early BKB, say you can just toss Sven in. That's true. That's true. Radiance middle tower Meanwhile, NIP attack. smoked up, going to walk straight past the Tide of Empire as they're up onto their own high ground. There is one person farming at her, and it is a Viper. NIP, can they close the gap? They're pinging it out. They want to try and chase him down here, but Viper smells something's off and runs himself away, and NIP are going to be left empty-handed. Hoping that maybe someone comes in, but it is actually just a tiny comes in, nukes a creep wave, and then backs himself out, so NIP don't even find anybody. Yeah, it's not like they really place all too much vision either. I, I think they're they're still trying to figure out where Sven is, and it's not happening. Dream is just narrowly dodging them. And Empire are doing a good team a good job at protecting him for sure. And they're farming up in the meanwhile. Razor I mean uh, Viper completes off his mechanism. Getting fairly close to his greaves. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Yeah, he's uh, looking pretty scary right now, and he's going to give him a lot of team fight. Maybe this might be the timing which Empire are looking for to really take the fight to NIP, because right now they're really letting him do what they want. You know, taking towers, the tier two is going to fall as well here. Ace will pick that one up. 33 comes in. The rest of NIP hanging around. PPD? No, doesn't want to drop down the supernova for nothing. Atos comes out onto him, but there is no response from Empire. No aggression being shown from NIP. They've taken the tower, and they can just back themselves away. And again, another tower gained for NIP. And uh, Empire really let them fall without too much fight so far. What are they waiting for? What timings do they need? Sven. Sven <laughs> is literally the only timing. <laughs> Whenever Sven is ready to fight, then they're ready to fight. They're smoking up right now. I think it's because they think that Roche might be going on. And so I, I think that maybe they'll toss an arrow into the pit and find out what the situation is. Although they do see Razor up top, so if they see Razor, then I guess it's pretty confident that he's not doing Roche and instead. Scan. This could be a very bad they scan. They could go for Razor. Dice, scan it out. Empire running forwards, and there's the toss and the stun combo coming out onto Fata, following it up with the Avalanche as well, and Fata is just melting here in the top lane. That is going to be a kill going to Dream, and they're actually looking for more here, and IP thought they could rotate into this one, but they got here too slowly. I wonder if they're going to lose anybody for it. Looks like they will be able to back themselves away. Empire unable to find an opening onto anybody else here, but still going to be happy with what they achieved up here in the top lane. I'm wondering if they can find anything else from it as well. Lycan moving all his units towards the mid lane to push that one in, to kind of destroy any hope they have of being able to take a tower out this. Although, uh, Dream will look for these creeps. Hacking very, I like very how Dream missed, I mean, he beat his own Storm Hammer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he landed on Razor and then Storm Hammer connects and is like, I, I tossed that shit before I even came in the room. <laughs> and Interesting one for sure, but at least you can immediately Razor. start hitting the dude, you know? Yeah, and that's the initiation that I was thinking that was necessary. I, a Bling Dagger would be nice, but that any any item that isn't BKB is just going to slow down uh, Empire's timings. Mirana just hit a peak, actually. Oh, Roshan going on. Empire need to be wise to this. I'm not sure they'd really want to let this go, but I don't think they're aware of it. Or even if they were, they just wouldn't get there quickly enough. So this is going to be a bit of a freebie for NIP, which is not good for Empire, to say the least. Yeah. Well, Slick Sax timing, is for sure. Of Maiden here, Maiden going for the TP out, but Sax oh, is going to lift him up, throw him back happen. in as well. Yeah, Fada closing the distance. They're all on top of him. The Viper is skinned alive. And uh, Sayu quivering in the tree line here. He's actually got a blink, so I'm not too sure what he's waiting for. Meanwhile, Kodos will take... Oh, he just wants to nuke a creep wave and then TP himself away. Greedy but admirable. So I'm assuming you were referring to Mirana's level 15 talent as being the spike? Yes, I am indeed. That that Maelstrom plus the uh, 
uh, leap attack, attack speed. speed on leap, yeah. Yeah. But PPD's gonna have to be very careful about how and when he supernovas. That too as well, yeah. I mean, even, even if he gets the uh, flames off of the Marana, she's not really gonna care about it. She's still yeah. Gonna... She's so fast with that talent. It's actually insane. Ace yeah. with the double Although damage. PPD has it level 12, so he gets a few more attacks. It's not the level 1 supernova quite yet, but they're keeping out the pressure. I mean, two more tier 2, or two more outer towers remaining. And they do have an Aegis, and they'll have it for quite a while, so they don't need to pressure too much. But I do think that they should do something with the Aegis. I don't think they should just farm with it for the next uh, three or so minutes. Yeah, I'm sure they will in IP, though. They know how to play aggressively, and uh, hopefully we'll see them running down the throats of Empire soon. And that said, we did have game one where they kind of missed their timings a bit, we felt. Yeah. Uh, smoke up being used, and they're gonna find Ace here. This is the Aegis carry, it's not the ideal target to go on. He tries to out the shape shift for the science, it's out. Grimstrike ulti as well, thrown down as Dream comes in with the double stun. They'll rip through, nope, no, okay, finally finishes off Ace there. The sacks are into the sky, but Amir gets taken down. Now Fada coming in, draining the damage off that Sven, chasing him down. And Ace, well, he's looking at Sayu as well. The spikes fit up, but they look towards PPD. PPD is dropped, but uh, Kodos may be going on quite far forwards here because the rest of his team are falling behind him. Black Archangel is gone, stun out onto Ace, however, oh, but Kodos is. Some trouble. No leaps gives a very little chance of getting out of here. But the toss back! Sayu, get out of here, my friend. I'll take this one for you. Get down, Mr. President, says The Rock, as he is gonna drop. What a hero. What a hero. What a hero. Can we get some respect paid in the chat, please, for that? Absolute. Yeah. yeah in the absolutely. Chat. Man. Sayu Tiny. I don't know why they didn't go for it in the previous game. The hero, he's very good on the hero. Granted, they did lose that fight. <laughs> Uh, it, mean, was initially, it was initially pretty strong by Empire, yeah. but the thing was, half of NIP wasn't even there, and so that's why it looks so good. Then, yeah. I mean, the Lycan and the Rubik got soulbound together, they... It was the first life for Lycan, so he goes into the age, just Soxa goes down. And then Razor enters the fight, basically eliminates Dream just by his presence. Doesn't even need to kill him, just needs to static link him. Ooh, they're going and... again though, static link immediately broken, so the Sven gonna hold on to his damage for now, but the Rolling Thunder coming through does not connect immediately, but does finally get Black Arc's Angel stuck in that cliff there, and he will be brought down. You know Kodos also held still, there comes Swashbuckle, but now Empire maybe looking for a cheeky grab onto 33, look at that toss, holding them together, and Empire will group them up and smack them down. PPD and 33 taken out, now looking towards Saxa as well, Arrows being thrown. Maybe and there's another a toss he forward. To Hello, sir. Saxa, your days are numbered, and that number has hit zero. Down goes the Rubik, and Empire take a really valuable three kills here. And don't forget, they took the uh, Aegis of the Lycan in that fight as well, so he didn't feel like he was comfortable to come in there without shapeshift, meaning that there was real no kill threat, and Empire were just free to chase down whoever they wanted. Yeah, and Saxa actually bought back in the previous fight, which I missed, so this is his dieback death. So he's dead for yeah. a very long time, so as a result... Empire are going to feel very confident going for this tower and probably a tier 2 afterwards. Probably the top tier 2 as Dream is migrating up. I have to say, this, uh, contrary to uh, Tsunami's uh, personal grudges, this Sven pick is starting to look pretty good. Yeah, I mean, Core Sven in general I find more reliable, but I'm still thinking that, I mean, he, so he, he has his BKB completed, and that's a huge benefit for him. But he still has to be concerned about the Razor every single time. The only reason the Razor, I mean, the only reason that fight looked so good for Sven initially was because the Razor was just not there until after the Lycan Aegis went down and Rubik went down. Yeah, yeah, that's true. It's all on Fadden now to uh, make sure he can keep track of this Sven and run him down. Does he have a BKB right. of his own on Fadden? Yeah, he does. Okay. And so he, he basically he and Sven completed at the same time, so they're both at nine seconds right now. Right. Gonna be uh, chasing each other down. Some uh, some drift racing through the streets of Dota 2. Well, oh, 26 minutes in, 15 kills for Empire, but a 3k god advantage. Only 12 kills for Ninjas in Pajamas. They're running this Lycan lineup as well, so you kind of expect them to be ahead at this stage. And I mean, they've taken a lot of buildings, they've done some damage to that middle tier 3 as well, but maybe not quite as much as they would have liked, so game starting to look a little bit dicey for them here. They're going to need to find a big win soon. Thought is tanking us. Top lane, Sayu in some trouble. Silence up, being run down by three heroes on NIP as they'll throw the avalanche his way, and they will get that kill. Sayu drops in the top lane. He was just here to kind of, you know, this is one of those things where you're just pushing out the wave. You're, you're fine if you die because you're getting so much valuable information for your team. You know, they now know that it's just going to be a like on his own here. 
But Kodos just TPs out. Okay, that's kind of interesting. Oh my god. Kodos nearly died to that. That, uh, <laughs> that creep yeah, sure is a good one. shapeshift. Ooh, oh, and dream. dream. And now Madden as well, also in some trouble here. Saxon throws down the Avalanche to the lift as well, holding the Viper still. Now throwing his own Nether Toxin and Maiden's just destroyed by Fada here. Just taking all of his damage and taking him out. Meanwhile, Sven did get himself away. I think he TP'd himself to the top shrine to get away from the onslaught of Lycan and left his Viper for dead, unfortunately. Yeah, and Lycan's a long way from any TP cancel. He's actually going for the Assault Caress, not anything like a Nullifier or a Basher, so... I don't really think it's that big of a deal as Dream just gonna mosey his way out. Does not have to activate a BKB. Oops, done. Alba used up quickly by Saxa to avoid that one. Actually, the BKB popped from Dream as well, but he's running around this fight and already what to do for himself. Saxa is gonna be, be uh, sorry, Fat is gonna BKB and TP himself away from that one. Meanwhile, a rock thrown, yep, Log will connect with PPD's face and bring down the Phoenix. Meanwhile, 33 is just rolling out of this fight, doesn't want anything to do with it, and that is a BKB charge wasted from Dream. They did get the Phoenix, but that was it. Yeah, I, I'm surprised uh, that NIP were in that uh -oh. Maybe overextending here a little bit as they're jumping on top of him, dust being used for the Moonlight Shadow as well, and Dream's trying to back himself out, but it's not gonna happen. Oh dear. Wow. He was he was kinda acting like they'd won the fight there. He was like, Woohoo, <laughs> let's go push. Team? Oh. I oh, think wait. it almost felt like he thought Fada died. And so he was like, nice, my BKB is down, doesn't <laughs> yeah. matter, Razor's dead. Oh god, he's not dead. Huh. That's not Doodle. good. Uh, you might be right there. That's some um, definitely accurate commentary. They're actually going to have to try and go for this one, but they do block Fata immediately. The damage of the Avalanche toss with the um, poison from the Viper is just too much. It's just way too much. Fata absolutely annihilated. Didn't see that wow. one coming. Yeah, no, okay. Well, they're they're executing these combos very well. Initially, I thought that they didn't have enough setup for the arrow, but so Fauna dies nearly as quickly as the Sven dies, although still slight advantage to NIP because they get the uh, Radiant Glyph out of the situation, and they still right. do a lot of Tier 3 damage. The Tier 3 is basically in deny range. It has 118 HP, so it's still very, very close to death. But yeah, both carries getting evaporated. This is the power of the rest of the team whenever they don't have their BKBs activated. Yeah, right. Although Roche is up now, and NIP are in a more prime position to take it than Team Empire are. It would have been nice if they if NIP could finish off that tier 3 because then they could go for the top shrine next, but still NIP take Roche so quickly that if they smoke in and they see like a Viper or Sven on the map, they can probably take it. It's really interesting though, I mean, watching these games, it's the same as the last game as well, where whilst the gold difference is, is non-existent, they are, they are equal on gold, and kills, everything feels very close, but when you think yeah. about it... If Both teams NIP, feel like one fight away, basically. Uh, yeah, if, NIP, if they take a fight, I, I think they can run down and pretty much end the game if they don't have buybacks on the side of Empire, so that is something they need to be worried about. I don't quite feel the same for Empire though, they don't have the same pushing ability. They don't have a like no. on the team. Yeah, exactly. The L factor as uh, NIP smoked up and maybe looking for some damage here as the Shivas is going to land. All right, there's a very dead Grimstroke. Green Light Shadow going to come out, but uh, they do have a sentry down already. But Sai jumping on the back lines trying to blow up PPD, but not going to happen. He gets the supernova up. Meanwhile, Dream just typing on the front lines. There comes the gate, but is it going to be enough? They're trying to bring down Ace here, but they finally going to get low. The stun is out of the toss as well. They will get Ace fought down. Oh, the double Angel does go down again, but Fata gets run down and killed, and Empire do so much work in these fights. Just more than happy to brawl it up with NIP at this stage. Man. Yeah, I don't think Razor was expecting that fight to actually happen. No, he they, they used the static link kill. on the Grimstroke, and so as a result, once they saw that cooldown was spent, Razor was like, all right, sweet, we killed Grimstoke. And he activated the shrine. So that's one aspect of fighting around shrines that was eliminated. But whenever he buys back, he can immediately TP and get back to the fight super quickly. Dream had nothing to be concerned about. He immediately went for the Phoenix Supernova. And now they're trying to go for Roche, but... Uh, they you know, arrowed they PPD, but 33 immediately goes for the Rolling Thunder, trying to hold them back and keep PPD alive. He does manage to swing out, but the right click from the Viper will connect and finish off the Phoenix. And now they go back into Roshan, picking up where yeah. we left off. 
that was a dieback, so PPD is now dead for a good 70 seconds, and so yep. this Roche is going to be pretty free. Joining Black Arcs Angel in the dieback pit. It's nearly over though, it's nearly done its time. <laughs> yeah, Roche goes the way of Empire, and uh, this is worrisome. I almost feel like Fada needs a blink. Oh, he does have it queued up. Oh, wow. So... <laughs> what a call. I, I didn't look. I didn't cheat. I looked afterwards. I but I I, uh, I don't think he can... That's just a... Yeah. Well played. <laughs> <laughs> he can't spend Static Link on anyone. It has to be Sven. Otherwise, you do not win the fights. Man, these illusions. They, need, they actually need to kill them like this because they just take yeah, the creep wave away. It's very awkward, but they've got a big creep wave at top lane as well, so they could definitely roll out there if they wanted to. But apparently they want the mid tower. I mean, it's a very Why important tower, tower, so no Sunday surprises. Attack. Bot lane is pushing though, and Lycan is slowly amassing an army. He is a little bit, but Dream's one in trouble here as he's actually losing his health really quickly. They're trying to force stuff away from this one. He will be able to run it off, but he's already lost all of his damage, meaning the Empire are going to have a pretty hard time fighting this one, and now Pada just ganging up on Lycan is Madden pushing mid. <laughs> Is a little bit. Uh, Madden in some trouble though. Avalanche comes out onto him. The Viper being taken down really low here. He is actually going to die. So they lose two in the mid lane. NIP find their feet and take some real damage. And they've also lost their racks in the middle lane as Lycan just and got to work. maybe Murata. Kodos, Link, Run. <laughs> trying to get herself away. Will get herself up to the high ground and over to safety. But NIP get a lot. This is how they've been needed to play. A little bit of rat dota, a little bit of just playing around Empire, splitting up the map, splitting up the team. You know, they got the sight link up onto the Sven, and the Lycan was just getting to work pushing. It's exactly what they need to happen in this game. And even though Dream has the Aegis, NIP are just not concerned about it whatsoever. They're still pressuring, even after Lycan took it. They are ideally trying to get a Viper buyback. Uh, I, th I think that Empire are going to be able to hold this, because Grimstroke is going to respawn. And with Stroke of Fate, I think that you should be fine. Moonlight Shadow stolen by Saxer and used up. And they're just tossing in the Sven. Go, bud. He's just sending him straight into the middle of everything. Trying to bring down A-Signs and quickly, but he just get lifted up. Now popping that BKB and trying to fight it up. But it's just not working. Dream getting his health broken away. Aegis is gone. Meanwhile, Maiden, he's brought down as well. The Viper is out of this fight and Dream needs to get himself away. He's had to pop the BKB defensively here. But now looking to maybe turn this one around, but he doesn't have the ultimate. So he's just not doing a lot. And they actually toss Dream in further. That's pretty risky. We'll oh, force stuff him out position. with a supernova. Yeah, beautifully done there on the high ground of Dream. Dream stunned up, 33 is on top of him here, he will take him down, Dream is dead, no buyback, the push is coming in thick and fast from NIB as they run down Kodos oh, as well, Zayu trying to get the th toss back into the fountain, cheese pot from Murana as well, they're trying to bring down Fada perhaps, Empire will keep two heroes alive to try and defend this one, but is it going to be enough, there's still everybody up on the side of NIP and they just took an Aegis fight. And they absolutely destroyed it, but Sven, he's just not very good with the Aegis, unfortunately. After he died with his god strength up, he didn't have it when he came back to life. And that meant that his team fight was very, very underwhelming. And NIP just tore him a new one, and now they'll look towards his middle lane, pinging out the tier fours here. They're looking to end this right now as Kodos held still, arrowed up, and blown up immediately. Buybacks into this fight. Alex Angel, Sayu, and Kodos have their work cut out for them as they're trying to throw up some arrows, only catching a wolf. Their second tier four being brought down. Black Arx Angel trying to make it back to spawn. Will he make it though? The toss is back into the spawn. 33 held oh, still by geez. the arrow as well. They can kill 33, but the Ancient, it's a half health. Shape shifts used from Ace here. Just wants to run around, trying to make more buybacks coming through. They're trying to bring back 33, but it doesn't matter. Like the Rubik game's over. <laughs> yeah, he's already won and he knew it. Ninjas in pajamas take the ancient right out from Empire's noses. That is a pretty crushing defeat. Look, he's like Rubik's like mooning the camera now. <laughs> At first, I thought he was celebrating just because of the leaps, but yep, that, yeah, that that's, that that's that's spiraled out of control very quickly. I I'm a little bit surprised that they went for the fight. Uh, I thought it was nice, like the the Stormhammer toss initiation into the immediate arrow. But the thing is that, like you said, Sven with an Aegis is not a great option against a Razor because, like, when do you use your BKB? When do you use God Strength? What happens if I get static linked on my first life? What happens if I get static linked on my second life? Uh, so there was really no good answer for a Sven initiation, at least not in a teamfight situation. Sven can initiate and pick off situations, but if it's a full five on five, if it's not on Razor, then you can't do it. If they tossed onto the Razor and then they got the whole Stormhammer into Arrow combination, then yeah, sure. Even though it probably wouldn't happen because Lycan would just send his entire army to deflect an Arrow. But I, it was a, it was kind of a, 
a last ditch effort that seemed poorly intentioned from Team Empire yeah. and NIP take advantage of it. Absolutely. Yeah, a little bit too hot on tiny airlines, perhaps, as they uh, throw their spend into the fights here. And uh, we'll have a couple of uh, uh, replays to get through here. Some key moments in this game. I, I still think, say, you tiny is something that you need to ban or either just be very aware of, because in game one and game three, he was fantastic. Didn't win this game, but I think he was a, a beacon of hope for Empire if they were to come back into the game. Absolutely and on the agree, flight yeah. side of Empire, I think you need to be very concerned about Fodder Razor at this stage. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, he's won both his games as Razor so far fairly... Well, I wouldn't say convincingly, actually. This game was very close, um, guard-wise, but yeah. Um, did find the, the final fight and uh, just push through and, and, and take those buildings with that Lycan, doing exactly what See, he needed to. So this is the fight where he's yeah. going on Grimstroke, and he's like, ah, is anyone going to defend this? And, oh, wait, so he actually didn't... Oh, he did get... Wait, what What happened to his static link? You're not using it on Grim. I don't know. I, I It looked like it was still off cooldown, but whatever the case, Sven is not static linked, and that's the takeaway. And so they win this fight pretty handsomely. Uh, also a nice soul bind into a double storm hammer, was able to land all the way on the Lycan who thought he was getting away. And then this fight, like he goes in, Razor immediately BKB static links, and now Dream is like, what the hell do I do? <laughs> it's uh, very awkward. A great um, ulti from PPD here as well, I believe, uh, later on in this fight. Is... Yeah. Yeah, Dream. I mean, the that's corner. the thing, right? Why would you use God's Strength and not BKB? Right. And then come back to life and then use your BKB, but like, you don't have God's Strength anymore. So I'm just struggling to piece that one together, to be honest, still. As uh, Dream just got blown up. And uh, yeah, there's some juicy stats for you there. I mean, pretty even on pretty much everything. No team having a decent advantage here, but just the nature of the draft, the nature of the heroes, and the way in which NIP took these fights led them to the victory, which uh, is just a sign of a well put together team doing exactly the right things in order to secure the victory um, with their drafts, which is, uh, yeah, I mean, we expect this from NIP, though. Yeah, and I think Empire are going to have to think more about their draft in the next game than NIP are, because NIP seem to have a pretty good su uh, success plan. You just give Fada a hero who can win a lane and then scale well in the mid game, uh, and then you just let Ace handle the late game. I don't really think you need to give 33 too much focus. 33 socks on PPD, like a, a lot of teams are kind of dependent on their four positions, like getting a lot of good farm, like I had said earlier. Uh, for Katowice, a lot of shamans were getting aether lenses, and I think that was game winning stuff. But for NIP, it seems like just make sure Fada has a good game. Yep, that's uh, that's pretty much the uh, name of the game in uh, game two and three, and uh, that will give NIP the advantage for I believe the first time in this series. Um, so now two one two NIP versus Team Empire. We're going to take a quick break, but we'll be back very shortly with the next game in this best of seven series. Still a long way to go, but we're getting into the thick of it now as these two teams battle it out to be claimed the victor of the Radiant, and uh, they also qualify for a weird tournament called the Mad Moon, which we don't know anything about yet, but we'll uh, maybe theorize on a little bit later on in the cast. My name is Nomad, he's been Tsunami, and we'll be back very shortly. <laughs> 